Hey there fellow adult collectors, welcome back. David Eon from Open By Chance and today we are doing another virtual tour of a vintage Toy Fair catalog. I've done a couple of these more recently. I did a 1974 Kenner Toy Fair catalog as well as the 1983 Sears Wish Book catalog which was a lot of fun. People who saw those seem to really enjoy it and today we're going to be taking a look at this and I'm going to warn you you know if you're a typical boys toy collector it's in here but Mattel is going to be very Barbie and Hot Wheels heavy because that's what was their biggest property at the time however there are stuff in here like Mad Monsters and Boglins and Captain Power and so on so you're going to see it it's just there's going to be a lot of Barbie first and I am going to show it because there are Barbie collectors out there who might be very interested to see what was available in 1988 and we're starting off here obviously with the Barbie perfume edition see like up here in the corner it says black perfume giving Ken doll and black perfume pretty Barbie doll you see the perfume bottle there and the little scent locket and if I remember correctly, there was actually fluid in those. It was like a real perfume bottle. I'm not going to dwell on the Barbie too much, but I am going to show it all before we get to the more traditional toys, if you will. Barbie was a really popular property for Mattel in the 80s, and I think it was the last of their heyday. You know, they went from the 60s. Barbie, of course, came out in the very late 50s, but the 60s, 70s, and 80s was when Barbie was making its money. And this is for girls, not for Barbie. You know, you see like little gift sets here, bottles of like shampoo and conditioner and body powder and stuff like that and little jewelry kits and things. You may have had these as a child, actually. Just let you see that really quickly. Mattel was one of the first toy companies, honestly. And here's the Barbie and the Sensations, you know, when they were trying to compete with Jem, I guess. <laughs> or, or was that Barbie and the Rockers? Because Barbie and the Sensations were also musicians, if I remember correctly. And then they have their fashions and their other things, some musical instruments and a jukebox, none of which works. But Mattel was an innovator, and I do have to, you see me pressing this a little bit, this is a glued spine, so I have to be careful, it's not just going to fold open. And I don't want to split it either, because a page could pop out, that's pretty common with some of these old glued spine editions. But Mattel was an innovator, Island Fun Hut set, that's actually kind of interesting, a little play set here in that they figured out before the other toy companies that there was no longer a market with children. And they figured that out in the early 90s when they started making all of these specialty Barbies. More Island Fun. And then uh, Doctors and Nurses. And a little station here, a little serving system. That's uh, not a traditional looking nurse outfit. That looks like a nurse outfit from like the 1940s. <laughs> anyway, they figured out early that children weren't buying toys anymore. And they started with Barbie. Here's Skipper. Some Skipper stuff. Very 80s looking. With the leggings and everything making commemorative Barbies and special edition Barbies. They have Bat Bob Mackie editions, FAO Schwartz exclusives. I remember the FAO Schwartz um, Circus Barbie. What was that, like $179? Special edition Barbies that were retailing anywhere from like 150 to damn near 500 apiece because they were experimenting with targeting an adult market for collectors who were fans of Barbie as opposed to marketing to children. 
It's a lot more skipper, skipper fashions. And, and these play sets, they were always made out of the cheapest possible material. This uh, Barbie and Skipper Closet Carrier Play Case. And it's possible you may see some things in here that were never put into production. That often happens in these catalogs. And there was uh, one in particular I pointed out in the 1974 Kenner Toy Fair catalog that I did not too long ago. Uh, look at that outfit. California Dream Ken. It's like California Beach Bum Ken. I think his slippers don't even fit. <laughs> it's fallen off of his foot. But you may see some things that you never saw before and they may not have been produced. That does happen. A warning that I make, more California dream stuff here, a warning to, that I make to a lot of adult collectors uh, when discussing modern collectibles, especially high-end stuff like Hot Toys and 3-0 and Mezco 1-6 and 1-12 scales are very popular, is so you can't even see her really. I just noticed that. She's like caught in the fold completely there. is to take a look at what happened with all of those really high-end Barbie items. Surf and Shop and Hot Dog Stand, Surf and Shop Playset, Beach Taxi Vehicle. There's some interesting accessories. These might work well with uh, six scale figures if you were doing dioramas actually. But the warning I give is the high cost of those items. They're very expensive, especially when you're talking about hot toys and things like that. Because those really high-end retail Barbies that were targeting adult collectors in the early, mid, and even late 90s are practically worthless now. You can't even get a quarter of the retail value on the aftermarket. So that's something to consider. Don't buy that stuff if you're thinking investment in the long run you're gonna get hurt and these are fun to dress and Beverly Hills fashions Beverly Hills fashions I don't know if, how well you can see all of that and give you a little bit of a close-up here for those of you who are into the Barbie and again I will be moving along to some more traditional action figures and such, which is mainly what a lot of people want to see, I'm sure. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cheat you if you're a Barbie collector, I will let you see this stuff. Get a good look. And this this particular catalog has almost 150 pages. And I believe almost 50 of those pages are gonna be Barbie. <laughs> but we're almost through it though, actually while I've been uh, prattling on here, giving you a little history, if you will, because I've been doing this for a long time, buying, selling, trading of action figures and comic books and toys. And I've done Barbie as well. I've collected a lot of Barbie as well. And this is the Barbie Sweater Soft Fashions Collection, by the way. There's Barbie, there's Ken. As you know, sweaters were a big thing in the 80s. Just ask Bill Cosby. He'll tell you. And the Barbie and Ken private collection here. <laughs> Look at the fur coat. You know, in the 60s, Sears had an actual mink coat for Barbie. It was real mink. And aftermarket on it. I haven't seen it for a long time, but I had seen unused sealed examples of those. They came on a little hanger with a little um, cellophane, whatever. Go for as much as 2000 I don't know if they still get that much, but I've dealt with Barbie before. Selling and trading. You know, I've been kind of doing it since the late 80s. I got derailed for a while because I had a large collection of my personal stuff because I was always a collector first. I would buy and sell and trade really just to build up my own collection. And this is the Barbie Pet Show fashions. You see they all come with a little doggy. <laughs> That's neat, actually. 
but I had a large collection stolen from my ex. Comics and action figures and things. And it was a long time before I got back into doing this again because I was very discouraged. Stuff that I'm sure I'll never be able to replace. Blinking Beauty, which is the horse, evidently. Blinking Beauty, my first Barbie. And my first Barbie fashions. I guess my first Barbie is a professional dancer. Have they come out with a pole dancer Barbie yet? I wouldn't put it past Mattel. As Mattel is uh, scraping the barrel with Barbie at this point, barely keeping it as a property. As I pointed out, the heyday for Barbie was between 1960 to about 1995, 96 back when people started getting sick of the even the adult collector versions so Barbie watches there gift giving Barbie fun time Barbie super hair Barbie see the super hair Barbie there as you can try to do a lot with her hair a lot of girls tried to do a lot of things with their Barbie hair it's not that easy I guess I think that's another page in there. Yep, I was right. Oh, here we go. The Barbie Ferrari. I wonder where Barbie got all of her money. Because she was either a socialite or she had all kinds of crazy jobs. The Barbie Ferrari and the Barbie Ice Cream Shop. And I guess there's a Barbie Ice Cream Maker where you can make actual ice cream. Did they ever come out with this? I don't know. If they ever came out with this. And the Barbie Ferrari. Barbie's making a lot of money. And Sweet Roses Barbie Furniture, it says. Sweet Roses Collection Barbie Furniture. And as you can see, they furnished her entire home. There's everything you could ever need. Sweet Roses Collection. <laughs> refrigerator and freezer with simulated food you gotta have simulated food in your fake refrigerator right old 80s style oven microwave those are very expensive in the 80s guys believe me you just pay hundreds of dollars for a microwave you could pay four or five hundred bucks for one we're almost through the Barbie actually by the way page 43 here we're about done bedroom set so she gets a bed she gets a bathtub and of course the bathtubs the Mattel bathtubs really worked so you could really pump water in there and give her a bath you know whatever living room accents it's a scale. it looks like a scale yeah a scale so the Barbie can make sure she's still anorexic interesting and here's the house and she's got two she's got a furnished townhouse and a furnished dream house but of course the furniture that's in these is not the same furniture that you just saw and that's a big structure these were really cheaply constructed though and with a cardboard backdrop very cheaply constructed they get the girl crammed up in there it is a big piece but it's not very well built it's got an elevator and there's the outside of it looks like a brick building there Barbie townhouse and then of course the Barbie dream house which had survived many incarnations and again there's no prices in here unless it's handwritten because oh and this is the Hart family the Hart family fashions and accessories but um, if there's prices in a dealer catalog, they're going to be handwritten. There's no prices in these. But I've seen dealer catalogs. I used to have a huge collection of these. I've lost them, of course. But they would hand write numbers to get an idea. Lots of uh, baby accessories and stuff. Baby wets babies, Heart Family Play Center. Hart family, baby cousin. 
I don't remember the Hart family very well. Camping, adventure, family car. Guess once you have a family, there's no more Ferrari, huh? And of course, the Hart family is separate from Barbie, even though it's basically retooled Barbies, is what you're looking at. Mattel just redid them and called them something else. See the little camping set there. Hart family kiss and cuddle dolls. Grandma Hart. So old man Ken and old man Barbie. Old woman Barbie, excuse me. And a playground set there for the kids. They don't make playground sets like that anymore. I thought that was going to be Christmas right there, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything about Christmas, even though it kind of, I guess because of the red and the frills, has a Christmas look to it. And this thing, I remember these, that looks really familiar. You put lipstick on her, and then you can make her kiss someone and leave little uh, little lip prints on them. And th I guess they show an example of that on the baby there, see? Like she kissed her face and left lipstick prints. And Lady Lovely Locks. And the Pixie Tails. So we're out of Barbie. We're still in girls' uh, marketing here, though. This looks vaguely familiar. Hide and Peaks, Lady Love Locks, Prince Strongheart. <laughs> he doesn't look like a strong heart to me, guys. And who's that? Duchess Raven Waves. Okay. Lovely Locks Sunny Peak Gift Set. Come on. Here we go. And some animals. Baby Dragons. Silky Pup. Silky Mane. A little bit of uh, My Little Pony competition going on here, I think. Not very successfully, though. Hasbro always had a lot of luck with the My Little Pony. Kept that going for a long time. Still around. Enchanted Island Fashions, Sea Magic Salon. There's always a salon. There's only one salon I would be interested in, and that is the Bionic Beauty Salon for the six million dollar man and bionic woman collection from Kenner <laughs> I would get that just because I'm so into the six million dollar man and properties naturally there's got to be a house castle lovely locks and I guess it comes with this swing looks like it's uh, a case and it folds out see the girl here with the with the thing folded up and then she opens it and all that's inside. I wonder if anybody out there collects these now. This is a collector for everything. Baby Heather. I don't remember Baby Heather. Mommy Let's Play, Cuckoo Hold Me. Battery operated. Not pull string operated. Hot Looks. Fashion models on the go. Really? Boy, they look awkward. Well, you know what it is, is their arms and legs are fabric over wire. See? So they're like bendies. They're like bendies, except for the head. That's why they look so weird like that. The bodies are odd. The girl seems to be enjoying them, though. She's like, yay. These are so cool. Not. <laughs> and some more mix and match fashions for for these dolls here more fashions I don't think this line ever took off I really don't remember these 
someone could tell me in the comment section if they ever if they ever had these more fashions and accessories well, when they crank it out they crank it out huh well Mattel was always good for making tons of outfits and clothing and accessories I think I saw in one marketing report from Mattel many years ago they said that they had produced so many Barbie fashions from so many different countries and different variations that they really have no record of no exact record of how much was made or how many different outfits there really are we wild things it says we wild things and this more closely resembles an action figure than a doll taking a crack at Polly Pocket perhaps because they are tiny maybe a larger version of Polly Pocket maybe that's what they were thinking I don't remember these either oh and that's what the limo does the limo folds out into like a house it's got a bathtub and everything. Look at that. A little kitchen. It's a fish on the grill. <laughs> That's funny. A lot of imagination went into designing this though. I bet you you could get some uh, some really solid play value out of that. A cheeseburger, a shoe. A slice of cake <laughs> a slice of cake there you go and it turns into what looks like a oh I guess it's supposed to be a birthday party this is a cake here very interesting and we're moving on from the dolly stuff oh, there's a little bit of glare I'll adjust that popples who remembers popples popples was very popular Popples was very popular and they just kind of show you here that they have them plush characters that transform giving a child two toys in one not really well I mean yeah you could turn it into a, a ball and there were boys Popples as you can see they got it split here there's the girl side there's the boy side and all the boy Popples turn into these various athletic balls soccer ball football basketball and so on and here you can get a better look at some of these individually these like cheerleader popples and the sport balls any boys out there play with popples there's some adult male collectors who have these now really more so I think out of the nostalgia of the fact that it's an 80s property you know what I mean like if I had some popples I don't think I would care I'm not looking for any but I wouldn't uh, if I came across one cheap in a thrift store I'm not gonna pass it up because it, it does really remind you of the 80s although I'd be more interested in Teddy Ruxpin I used to watch the show with my sister and Teddy Ruxpin aside from the talking doll actually did have action figures there is a series of Teddy Ruxpin little three inch jointed action figures made by worlds of wonder creative activities stretchy twisty and unusually flexible fun and it's the pump pumper it says so I guess what this thing blows up like a balloon and yeah it's like a balloon and you inflate it and then you make whatever you're gonna make on it and then deflate the balloon and then you could take it off that's interesting and what is that stuff play material okay so it's the stuff pumper and stuff play material they're just showing you the different uh, it must be kinda of like play-doh and it hardens some sculptures. This looks like something from Pee Wee's Playhouse right there. Cool shades. 
So, adjustable sunglasses. I guess you would get this whole kit and you could change it around. That's very kiddish. I don't remember these either. I don't think I ever saw these. Hooks expanding on their plush line. And I guess you could link them together like uh, Barrel of Monkeys. It says new TV advertising. They hug and cling on almost anything, especially you. I don't really remember these that well either. Did they ever come out with the hooks? And here's some close ups. And of course, you know, if you ever wanted to know for sure whether or not any of this stuff was released or not, usually an eBay search will reveal it, unless it's ridiculously rare. I bet these weren't cheap. Some games here. Wet Head and Air Head. I don't remember these. <laughs> I know, I keep saying that. <laughs> I don't remember. And Whack Attack. Whack Attack. It's got a timer. I guess you're supposed to see how many times you can beat him down before the timer goes out. I bet it's not as exciting as all that. And what is this? Lie Detector. Lie Detector game. And Monster Lab Escape with molds for making your own pieces from the Mad Monster series and this must be leading into Mad Monsters we're on page 100 here no nope, not yet I know there's Mad Monsters in this book Cathedral and Force Field I guess you have to put the magnets together in just the right configuration and then fit it in there so it doesn't come apart that's interesting. Hot Wheels. And there'll probably be a lot of Hot Wheels here. Now I'll just run through it very quickly. Color Racers Auto Paint Factory. Basically they change color in the water. So you're not really painting them. You just put them through the water and they change color. More Hot Wheels Color Racers and Hot Wheels Classics. Any big Hot Wheels collectors out there? I was never really much into that. I collected some Hot Wheels and some Matchbox cars when I was a kid. But as an adult, I never really got too much into it. Some more Hot Wheels classics. I don't see any of the ones that I had, although, you know, I might not be able to remember. I might have had that shark. That looks familiar. And that other one that looks like a, it says Vampire there, the bat looks familiar. And I think they still make a lot of these. They just, Hot Wheels for the most part, don't they nowadays just kind of recast the same stuff over and over again in different colors? I mean, they do have some new stuff, like when they do intellectual properties like Ninja Turtles or Batman or whatever, but I think they recast a lot of the same stuff. Some trucks, it says Workhorses, Trail Busters, and Action Command. And this is the Workhorses page. A little police car on the bottom. Trail Busters. And again, trying to be careful with this glued spine. 
and then the action command military vehicles. Now these are probably the most interesting ones I've seen to me. Those are nice. If I was going to get Hot Wheels carded vintage Hot Wheels, I would probably look for these. Crack ups. And I'll try to pause real quick in case somebody wants to like freeze the video and take a look real quick. I do try to pause from time to time. And these are five car gift packs over here. Which Matchbox does a lot of those even still, don't they? The five five car gift packs. Stunt Raz and Ratapult cars, it says. Sight and Smash and Speed Trigger. And play sets. You knew they had to be play sets, right? Dinosaur Mud Pit. <laughs> okay. And Alpine Mountain Adventure. And then the car wash and service station over here on the right. You remember these. How they, uh, they fold it out. It's like a carrying case. You see I got a loose page back here too. It's making me a little nervous. That one looks like it might be coming loose. Again, very common with these, unfortunately. And the Hot Wheels City Stow and Go. I want to say they still make this one. These are cool though. I mean, if you're into Hot Wheels cars, those are just cool, I gotta say. And there's the building site. I like how they always turn into a carrying case. And that's a throwback because, you know, Marx used to do that a lot. Marx made a lot of sets like that in the 50s and 60s. I think mostly in the 60s, you know, Ford Apache or whatever, and the whole play set was in a carrying case. Mini Market, Drive and Eat. Fix and Fill Center Cargo Carrier. I wonder if I'm triggering any memories for anybody. If anybody's looking at these and saying, damn, I had that. And the Turbo Tracks Turbo Glow. And this is the set, I think, this looked so great on TV. All of these kind of racing sets did. I never had one, and I never knew anybody who did. <laughs> does, does anybody remember anyone actually having any of these? I know they were expensive retail, and that's probably part of the reason. Oh, Boglins. Boglins. You need apparently a bazooka to hunt Boglins. Look at this kid. There's the little cages. And these are so hard to find in decent shape now. Even loose because of the material they're made out of. They just kind of come undone. I had put a picture of these pages on my Instagram not too long ago. There they are. Baby Boglins is what these are being advertised as. Schlump. Sponk. 
slurp, squidge, squawk, and squeal. Because they are named. You know, if you wanted to see these names again, I'll go back on this side so you can pick up those names. That's Vlob. Maybe you want to have a specific name to try to look them up. Drool and Dwork. I can't get over the way they get that kid dressed. <laughs> I do not have any Boglins. I'd love to have some, though. I, I would I could see myself collecting these. These are cool. Mad scientist. We made it to mad scientist. And this is the Fred D. Head creature building kit. And I did not have anything like this. You know, he's got like the mask. <laughs> it came with that too. That's part of this kit. And the fearsome face off playset. And you see that it's like skin over the faces and you spray water at each other and try to dissolve the faces and expose the skulls see fearsome face off is the whole kit there that's a bizarre toy Splatters Creatures, Eyeball Maker Kit, and Time Freaks. I guess with the Splatters Creatures, yeah, you, you build the creature, and you fill it up with the blood or whatever, and then you smash it, and it bleeds to death. Okay. <laughs> really, Eyeball Maker Kit. I guess you're supposed to destroy that too. Flip the eye into the little teeth and crush it. And then the freaks wrist watches. Now that's cool. This looking at these right here, the time freaks, wart head, rot head, and bone head. That makes me want to look these up and see if I can find them now. Find them on the card maybe. That's really awesome. I like that. Monster Lab. This is the thing that most people remember is this uh, Monster Lab. Monster Lab, Dissect an Alien, and Monster Flesh Kits. There's the Dissect an Alien. That looks really cool, too. <laughs> oh, man. And then the monster flesh kits there. And living ice and glow in the dark, glowing glop, alien blood. Who used to play with this? Tell me in the comment section who used to play with this stuff when they were a kid. I remember these really well. That's cool. Look at that kid. Captain Power. Oh, that's that page that's acting funny. Captain Power, which was a television show, and it was an interactive show. It was pretty innovative of Mattel at the time because, as you see, these two kids had these two little planes, these two starfighters or whatever, and you could interact either with a video cassette that you could purchase or with the show itself and shoot at the screen and it would let you know when you could do it and it would interact directly the the video or the show would send signals to the starcraft 
and you could get blown apart. You could lose your ship or you could score points. I was like, that's actually really clever for the time period. And these are the basic action figures. I'll close up on these and let you take a good look at them. I used to have a set of Captain Powers carded. I don't have them anymore. I might go back and find them again before prices get too ridiculous. Because these late 80s and early 90s figures, a lot of them are still kind of affordable. Those are the good guys. And then over here, we have some villains. Dread Commander, Dread Trooper, regular uh, Tritor figure. Lord Dread, Sauron, and Blastar, Ground Guardian. But I think, like Captain Power, the prices haven't gotten too outrageous yet that I wouldn't be able to go back someday and possibly find some nice carded examples. Some vehicles and accessories. Rounding out the catalog here, uh, we're on when. We're on page 137 now. Resistance Ambush Pod. And then Anti-Personnel Patroller. And then over here we have the Mobile Sky Bike Launcher. One problem with these for loose figures is that they have that chrome paint on them and that stuff rubs off and it comes apart like that as it launches the sky bikes ask anybody who collects vintage silverhawks how hard it is to find loose examples that are in decent condition dread stalker And the track 5000 down here. It says Captain Power light activated accessory. And the toys, just like with the with watching the show, could interact with each other. And you know, you shoot the infrared light at one toy or another, and it would react. And the Bio Dread Armor Destroyer. A futuristic looking tank there. We've got Blast Pack 1200. Again, interactive. And then the Missile Lock Indicator, it says. You see, it's almost like a gun. It's got the little trigger under there and everything. And so are the Phantom and the Power Jets, which are on the next page. See the Power Jet XT7 and the Phantom Striker. And you see what happens when you're hit. ejects the pilot. More Captain Power. Skybike ST3000. And showing you the interaction with the television here to give you a better detail how that would work. And this kid scored 24 points. And then the interlocker, which I guess is a stationary cannon. And again, when you hit it, it flies apart. It ejects the pilot. It'd be very cool, I think, to be able to interact with the TV that way. That makes me want to get some Captain Power accessories and buy one of the old VHS cassettes and try that out. Although I don't have a cathode ray tube television, I don't know too many people to do anymore. What you're looking at here is the power base 
the power base requires one 9 volt and two C batteries that are not included. Underrated playset. You know, people talk about 80s playsets and you know you want to talk about the USS Flag and the Cat's Lair and things like that, but take a look at the size of this playset. And it's interactive because the cannons shoot those infrared beams at the other vehicles. There's a lot going on with this playset. Take a look at the inside of this thing. And it's got a launch pad platform and the cannons and everything. That's impressive. Includes jet pad, radar tower, tank, and Land Rover. So it came with vehicles. It came with those vehicles. This tank is included. That's cool. And what's the Land Rover? That must be this piece. Wow. What an underrated 80s playset. Look at that. And it interacts with the TV. So you could sit behind your base in front of your old tube television and shoot at the bad guys. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And the video cassettes for in case you can't find the show, I guess. No fair, you're hiding behind the sofa. Captain Power. Future Force. This is the final page of the catalog. Yeah, I'm kind of inspired. I may want to go back and f find me some card in Captain Power now. So what do you think? Did you enjoy that? Did you see some things that you never saw before? Were you inspired like I just was? Did it bring back some memories? Were you like, wow, I remember that. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Tell me about your childhood. <laughs> tell Dr. Freud. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, tell us. Tell us in the comments section. Maybe get a little conversation going with some other fellow collectors. Check out some of our other catalog tours that I've done on this channel, as well as other things. We do a weekly roundup. We do tours of our museum. We do adult collector market discussions and a lot of different things on this channel. So I hope that you'll join us. Please do like, share, subscribe, all of that. And what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.